So in today's video, we're gonna talk about liquidation resourcing online. We're gonna show you some of the sites that I've used and uh, we'll talk about all the ins and outs and what you need to know to successfully purchase a liquidation lot online. So without any further ado, let's go. Quite a few of you have asked me to make a video about liquidation. A few of you have left comments asking me to sort of show you how I go about buying my liquidation. And so today I'm going to show you some of the things that I look for. And then additionally, I'll show you what I recently bought. It's funny because I made a video earlier in the week. It was about a 45 minute long video. And I went through the entire step of buying a pallet, finding the pallet, going through the whole process of getting the pallet. I'm doing it again now in uh, hopes that we can help you learn uh, some things that I do. Now, I'm not perfect, but this is what works for me. Uh, you may do something different that works for you. And by all means, if it works for you, continue doing what you're doing. This video is meant to give you some ideas on how I source and you can incorporate the things that you like into your routine. And uh, if you happen to notice anything that I'm doing that I can do better, please put that information down below in the video comments so that um, I give it a shot. If I like it, I'll incorporate it into my, uh, my daily routine. So sourcing is the number one thing you can do to make money in this business. Bottom line is, is, is if you source better in this business, you're going to have a better chance than say your competitor uh, who happens to be paying more for the same product. It's very important that you are mindful that you do not overspend when you're buying these liquidation pallets. It is very easy because most of these sites, in fact, all the ones I deal with are auction based. And it's very easy to say, I really want this pallet or this lot. And you fall into this trap where you get outbid and then you tell yourself, okay, I'll outbid them one time and then they outbid you again and I'll outbid them another time because you really want this product. You need product to resell. But at a certain point, you end up spending more money than you should have. And that's because you didn't have the discipline to stick with the plan. So my plan going into this is I'm going to take the suggested MSRP. And yes, I know that a lot of you out there uh, and I feel the same way in many uh, aspects that MSRP really doesn't mean a whole lot because sometimes you have these uh, liquidators who uh, overvalue or overstate their MSRPs, but it's really all we have to work with because I'm not going to go through every item in, in these pallets. You're talking hundreds of items and get the actual MSRP. So you have to, to sort of do trial and error and know what liquidator is more honest with their MSRPs. For the most part, I use them for my 40-40 method. And for uh, any of you who don't know what the 40-40 method is, just stay tuned. Uh, I will be showing that to you here shortly. And so just know this, this video is going to be edited for some brevity in that I don't want this thing going 45 minutes to an hour. I definitely will be going back through and getting rid of some of the, the low points so that we can keep this video moving and uh, somewhat interesting to uh, you all out there. So the first site we're going to check out is liquidation.com. And the easiest way to start off is to simply find a location. Look for the location that's nearest your area. They have a facility in Plainfield, Indiana, Garland, Texas. They have two in Las Vegas, but the one is really only four target returns and it's relatively new. Brampton, Ontario, Canada, North Wilkesboro, North Carolina, Florence, Kentucky. So just for the sake of this search, we'll check out my area, which is in Las Vegas, and we'll do a search. Now, if you look down, you can, to the left here, you can if you want to look for shelf pull salvage returns most of these are returns and most liquidators do only offer returns shelf pulls are simply merchandise that's been sitting 
that they have not moved and they are instead liquidating the merchandise. Salvage is broken and it's not uh, really worth buying. It's uh, unless you're able to go in and maybe refurbish these items. I do know of people who actually go in and try to uh, make money on these lots, hoping that they can get a functional item, something that's an easy fix, but I would steer clear of salvage if you can. So let us look at some merchandise here. Uh, we have a lot here. I'll just click on this one randomly. Now the first thing I look for is where is the merchandise coming from? So on liquidation.com, you can scroll down and you can see this is sourced from Amazon liquidations. Uh, Amazon, Target, Walmart are, are fine. I uh, do like Amazon items because their manifest seems to be more accurate. So this $5,133 is the manufacturer suggested retail price. And whenever you see a title and it has sort of an odd amount as the MSRP, chances are it actually is a manifested lot. So as you can see here, we view the manifest and it does have it does have uh, a manifest here. And the most expensive item is a Citizens Men's Eco Drive watch. You have uh, some watches here. You have an Instant Pot, uh, Century Lock. So a lot of these are just household items, a gun safe, okay? And so that gives me an idea of what's in here. And let me go back here. I'll also take a look at the manifest to see what the makeup of this is. So we got a couple $200 items, some $100 items, and it's all, usually it's in the order of value, but anything that's under 40 bucks, I'll usually draw the line here. While this stuff is sellable, um, you can see it goes way down. This stuff is sellable, but you know, I'm not gonna sell a $4.21 item on eBay. I will usually consider if the manifest has a lot of these small ticket items, I'll kind of bump this price down. I have a formula that I use. It's the 40 by 40 method. So what I'll do is I'll take this manifest information. Now you can download it into CSV, but for the sake of this video, and if you really want to have like Google Sheets or what I have is Microsoft Excel, and you'll just hold down the left mouse key while you're scrolling down here and it highlights all this data okay and so we have 162 items at five thousand one hundred thirty three dollars so i'll copy that and i'll go to my spreadsheet that i've sort of set up for this exercise and what i do here is i will as you notice, the, the manifest is sorted by the actual price or the MSRP of each item. I don't want to get too involved or invested in items that are under 40 bucks. Um, you know, of course, I'll still try to sell those, and those to me are sort of like gravy. Um, but I am going to, anything under this assorted bed and bath, that's $39.99, I'm going to go down and I'm going to disregard for the purpose of this exercise. And I would suggest you do the same because, you know, real quick, you see a, there's a replacement charger uh, for a keyboard for $4.21. There's a $5 item, $6. Those, sometimes you'll even have to sell those separately and they're just a pain. I don't want to deal with them. I want to focus on the bread and butter, which is over 40 bucks or 40 bucks or higher. So what I'll do is I'll do a simple formula. And, and if you don't know how to do this again, I would suggest you uh, looking up the method on calculations in Excel. But I'm going to take all of what's in uh, the C category, okay? And I'm going to get an idea of what the updated MSRP is. So as you can see, half of your MSRP, that was a $5,300 listing. Half your MSRP is stuff that's under 40 bucks. I probably wouldn't buy this at all because of that. But just for the sake of the exercise, how much do I want to be into this for? And I'm focused now on this number, which is 2698. 
So I'm going to take that number and I am going to multiply that by 0.4. That means, and this is my 40-40 process, and I've spoken about this before on my videos. I plan on making 40% of the estimated MSRP. That's after your fees, your shipping, uh, things like that. And I'm 40% is a lot on the low side because you never know the condition you're going to receive with these lots. Could be anywhere from brand new to used to not even functional. So I would rather err on the side of the low end, whereas the high end is probably 60% of MSRP. So I figure that this lot will yield me a little over a thousand bucks. Now, how much do I want to pay for a lot like this? So what I'll do is I'll multiply thousand seventy nine by forty percent so I want to be into this listing for no more than four hundred and thirty one dollars and seventy four cents okay now keep in mind that I'm I have to pay a ten percent fee to liquidation.com so I probably don't want to bid on uh, this any higher than about 380 bucks, 390 bucks. So let's go back to the listing and let's see what it is selling for right now. Well, it looks like the current bid is $531. So it's about $150 more than what I want to pay for it. And the fact that there's about $2,500 in this listing tied up to stuff I don't want to bother with, I, I don't even want this at 380 to be honest with you. I'm willing to move on. Unless I find some items I can just totally flip right now that's going to get my investment back, I'm moving on. There's plenty of product to be found. And let's try to find another listing here. And that's sort of the way you just got to move on. You have to have some discipline here. And of course, there's a wide variety of items you can buy. Anywhere from home decor, uh, you can buy electronics, you can buy clothing. Um, but let's take a look at this particular listing here. Now, one thing that you can look for as well with liquidation.com, it says an 82% savings. I can put my formula aside for a minute. My formula pretty much puts us right about 85%, 86%. So I don't want to be any lower than 80%. 82 is really on the, uh, the low for me and I don't go any lower than 80%. And I have to really like the lot when I'm looking at this manifest to go any lower than my formula, let alone to 80%. Uh, the higher this number, the better you're doing, okay, with liquidation.com. It's really the only site that shows you that number, but since I buy so much on liquidation.com, that's what I would recommend to you. I see so many people buying liquidation on liquidation.com that are 60 to 70 percent, which to me, you can make a little bit of money, but to me, the product is uh, you're going to be making small margins, and that's not what I'm trying to do. I'm going to avoid this, and we're going to move on to another one because I just don't like that number. I save myself a lot of time by just looking for uh, good listings here. Let's try this one here. It's a home listing. And this one is home Marcato pasta machine, cast iron skillet, MSRP 1740. See, it's 94% savings. So I know without even doing my calculation on this that uh, I'm probably in some pretty good shape. Um, well, let's take a look. Let's look where it's from. Amazon. Okay. We have uh, 56 items in here. So we're looking at roughly $50, $60 per item. And if we dig deeper and look at the manifest, uh, there's a fishing reel, a $250 fishing reel. And to see what we might get for that, let's click on that title. And I have an eBay tab running and I'll just paste it in the search. And I have it set already for completed and sold items. This fishing reel brand new sells for retail for $249.95. It's very close to what they have on retail. And even pre-owned, look how beat up that fishing reel is. 
they're getting 221.50 plus shipping. So they're getting about 80% of the uh, MSRP on here. So they're only asking for 100 bucks for this. So it'd be 110 bucks. The problem for me and the way you can look at this is this is not a pallet and there's a picture that's offered. I'll go here. There's a picture that's offered for each box in the lot. So I already know that for me, I'm going to have to pay to ship four boxes of this merchandise. That's about 80 bucks. So it, right there, it brings it up to about 180. But let's, let's investigate because maybe this is something I would be interested in, in purchasing. So we're going to do what we did before. And I'm going to fast forward this video so that you don't have to watch me go through this calculation again. Okay. So as you can see here, I have the spreadsheet set up and you remember there is 56 items in this, but 46 of the items are under 40 bucks. So I excluded those and it left us with 10 items. Those 10 items equal 771.47 MSRP. Uh, I expect to make about $308.59, probably between three and 400 bucks to be honest. Based on that fishing reel alone, I probably can make close to 400 on this. And I don't want to spend more than $123.44 on this lot. Now, as you can see, that's problematic for me because of the fact that on this particular lot, I'm dealing with $100, we'd be about $110 after fees if nobody else bids on this. And then I have to shell out shipping which for me, four boxes are going to be about uh, 80 bucks. So I'll be into it for about 200. And, you know, I'll, I'll, I may look at this a little closer if I can't find merchandise, but I'm probably going to pass on this only because uh, I can sell the other stuff that's under 40 bucks, but it's just going to be a lot of my time on 10, 15, $20 items. And I'm focusing on the home runs, the things that are going to make. The, the goal is here to make a profit of about double your money. And that's really kind of what you're wanting to look for when you're doing these calculations. So I'm going to move on. Let's move on to a different site. Before I continue, please do me one favor. Please hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and also hit that notification bell icon so that you can be notified the next time I make this video. I thank you and much appreciate you doing that. The next site I want to look at, and I just want to look at it briefly, is your direct liquidation. And so your direct liquidation site is one where you have your major retailers, you have your Walmarts, you have uh, various uh, vendors, you have Target, you have Amazon. And so what I'm looking at right now is generally the categories that you can look at. You have automotive, electronics, furniture, general merchandise, home, home improvement, you have uh, sports and fitness, toys, uh, different uh, ones like that. And so for me, I've always bought from, when I bought from them last year, it was always with electronics and I always selected untested customer returns. I found that I had the best experience when I bought pallets of that nature. But uh, without diving into the numbers, I find that their prices are already too high. If you look at this particular pallet, for instance, uh, while they don't charge a 10% markup like liquidation.com does, you're buying directly from them. The problem is I would rather spend that extra 10% with liquidation.com because they're, they're the middleman. If there's an issue where they misrepresent the lot, you have a better chance of getting your money back for the missing items than you do directly through direct liquidation, which is why I had an issue with them uh, many times. And I finally just gave up on them. I, you know, give them a few chances. And if I don't get the resolution that I'm looking for, they just blow me off and they're not helpful. Then that tells me they don't want my business. But I'm, I'm giving you an honest review here and you can decide for yourself if you want to actually use direct liquidation. I can tell you that their lots are not as good as they once were. It's like they cherry pick their lots and the good merchandise, the really good stuff that you can sell and flip really quick is uh, been taken out and this is sort of what you get left with sort of the the store merchandise the off brands 
And while they still have value on eBay, they're a little harder to move. And so in addition to that, I think their prices are too high. If you have a lot, now I don't know why the lines are there. The MSRP is very close. Their, their MSRPs are very accurate uh, for the most part. Sometimes you find some egregious errors, but $4,300, well, if the first bid on this is $1,200 or the bid on this item is $1,200 and the first bid is not far off from that, they're pretty much telling me that I have to spend 25% of MSRP plus the cost of shipping this large pallet, which is like around three or 400 bucks. And that'll put me in the vicinity of 25 to 30%. And if I think that on the low, I can make 40, maybe 50% of MSRP, this isn't worth my time. And that's another reason why it's so hard to source with this company because most of their items, like for instance, this one, there's no bids on this one. Uh, there's three pallets of earphones, right? And this is a $15,000 lot, but they're starting it off at $3,200, $3,100. And if you do the math on that, that's uh, already starting it off at like 15%, 15, 16% of MSRP. And if you look at the quantity, there's 286 items. And uh, that's roughly about 30 bucks per item MSRP. It's not worth it, just not worth it. Uh, between the effort and between the lower margins, and it used to be a lot better, like I said, I would certainly check into it, but for me, I'm avoiding direct liquidation, and it seems like they're, they're definitely, it seems like they uh, just don't have their act together, and I haven't looked at these guys in a while, but I just wanted to give you another example of a place you can source and use my 40-40 method, $4,300. You multiply that by 0.4 in your calculator. That tells you you should expect to make $1,600 on this lot. Multiply that again by 0.4, and you really don't want to be into this for more than 400. And I can tell you, this is no good for for my formula. So let's move on to the last one. It's B stock. B stock is another one. Uh, I just bought a lot from them on Tuesday. When I made that video, it uh, was sourced from B-Stock through Costco, and I was so excited to get the, to get the video out to you guys, and it had no audio, and so I'll show you what that lot is. But before I do that, you have Nordstrom Rack, you have Walmart Liquidations, Best Buy, uh, you know, Amazon, Costco, and I did Costco, and we can go to Costco, and I can show you what some of the, the merchandise they have. Now with Costco, it's pretty much anything you can buy at Costco is going to be in a liquidation pallet. You have toys, you have kitchen goods, you have uh, uh, clothing, you have health and beauty, more clothing, you know, all kinds of stuff. And, you know, like this one here, current bid is 14050 on a $45,000 lot. So that's already at like 33%. That's 10 pallets of toys. You're probably going to end up paying uh, about $2,000 in shipping. And the cost per unit is $7.51. You know, we click on it and check into it. But just the, the rough math is definitely not something I would, I would be uh, interested in. But if you want to look at the one I purchased, and that will give you a better idea of what, what we did, and the cool thing is they'll provide you some stock photos to see what some of the items you're getting. So this is the one that I purchased. And that's the actual photo of the, the pallet, or in this case, the Gaylord, that all of this merchandise is in. Okay, so far so good. And then, of course, you can scroll down here and you see a manifest. And what I liked about this lot is we have some replenishables. I have 32 of the same headphones, which means, and their value MSRP of 200, I think these go for about 80, 90, 100 bucks, just depending on the condition. And I can, five, five, 10 minutes, I have uh, a listing made and it's just gonna be the time it takes to, to go in and test these, these headphones. But I can have 32 items, uh, my, some of my most expensive items from this up really fast. And that's appealing. 
you know, I have eight of these $300 headphones. I have 20 of the $90 Bluetooth speakers. I have some uh, Dre Beats, Power Beats, 21 pairs at 80 bucks a piece. Uh, you know, I've got 20 of these. I probably can sell them for like $10 a pop. But, you know, I have an Onkyo receiver for 400 bucks. And there's 165 items, and it's $18,000 is the MSRP. Uh, my calculation said I probably needed to be into this for about $36, 37 after shipping. And I, my final bid was $3,025. And because my shipping on this was from California, it was about $3,300. And so that meets all my criteria. And I'm uh, really looking forward to this particular lot. Now, as you can see, Costco, you can source from anywhere. There's probably about a dozen here. It looks like there's about a dozen different uh, places that you can source from and find one that's close to your area so you can save on shipping. And, uh, you know, follow the formula. You're going to be disappointed at times where you lose out on some listings because you're going to be disciplined and following a, a formula, but when you do come across that lot that you're able to pick up and you're able to make a good uh, profit off of, you're going to be happy you did. And so that's, that's pretty much it. So Dizzy, if you guys are interested in seeing a video of me unboxing this, I'll probably have it in about a week and a half to two weeks. Drop a note down below in the comments and let me know if this is something that interests you. So what do you guys think? Was I able to answer a lot of your questions through this video? If there's any questions or concerns or comments that you might have about this video as it pertains to sourcing liquidations or maybe even any questions you have about liquidations, drop them down below. And guys, sourcing, like I mentioned, sourcing, as I mentioned before, is very important in this business and you know some of you guys go to yard sales some of you go to swap meets some of you go to uh, thrift stores and some of you may even pick up your liquidation in person and that's all fine and buy your liquidation in person but this is just one more method you can use to help uh, maybe supplement your sourcing while it's not hard you guys got to know one thing that flipping ain't easy and we'll see you next time